So I was having a discussion with my friend about Dennis Rodman, how he was kind of ahead of his time in terms of his views on sexuality, and was extremely brave to speak about this in a time that wasn't exactly at the cutting edge of open-minded thinking. But then we got onto extroverted personalities in sport, and how people are perceived by the way they present themselves, and those perceptions not usually being reality. We got on to talking about people in other sports with similar quirks on how they present themselves like Paul Pogba, Odell Beckham Jr. Both have had perceptions of them being lazy or unprofessional, but in my opinion that's a load of bollocks. You don't get to where these people are by being lazy. That's a fact. No one is a professional sportsman at the top level and can be considered world class if they're lazy, because if you are, you get found out. And the point of me telling you all this is that it got me thinking about rugby's relationship with extroverted personalities and with individualism in general, and whether we celebrate individualism. And the answer is a lot more grey than I expected. The short answer is it all depends on really where you're from and what you look like. Like in England, we don't celebrate individualism unless it fits into what the greater masses deem acceptable, and I understand that's a contradiction, but this issue is complex so please stick with me. It's more to do with staying in your lane. Here's my example. People love Joe Marler in this country, and with good reason, he's charismatic, funny, and always a joy to watch whenever he's been interviewed. But he still does fit into the lane of what people find acceptable. Yes, he has a mohawk and sarcastic wit, but it doesn't seem to rub people up the wrong way. And I guess I have to address the elephant in the room that all the people I named in terms of extroverted personalities who have had, in my opinion, false narratives pushed on them have been black. And that is an issue that I want to cover in another video. And the unfortunate truth is that that is a part of it in this country. Part of it is racial. Most of it subconsciously racial, but that's the way it is. But I don't think it's as big an issue in rugby as it is in other sports. But nevertheless, I still think that it is an interesting question and discussion to have. One that I'm probably very underqualified to talk about, but nonetheless, I will pose this question to you. If Joe Marler was a back who played, let's say, on the wing, would that change your perspective and opinion on him? Or let's say he was a flary player who was all about the skills in the vein of a Finn Russell at 10, but he still presented himself the way he does. Would he still be as beloved? I hope so, because the game needs more personalities like his. But I'm hesitant to commit to say yes or no, and that's kind of part of the problem. And I'm even more hesitant to ask what would happen if you changed his ethnicity or background. These sort of questions I've been pondering on for the last few weeks, which brings me on to people's reaction and response to people is all about the social climate of people at the time. As a stupidly contrived example of this, as a person living in the current year of 2019, if a man tells me he's homosexual, that shouldn't matter to me, because I've been brought up in a social climate that understands that there are gay people, straight people, bi people, all kinds of people, and I shouldn't think any less of anyone because of their particular sexuality. But say I was born in the year 1919, the social climate I would grow up in would be very different, and then you get onto particular cultures having different social norms at different time periods. And so my point, don't worry it's en route, is that the social climate of rugby is an ever-changing, evolving mess of contradictions, because unfortunately people are an ever-changing, evolving mess of contradictions. And I feel like whenever something new comes along in sport, silly people either fear it out the gate or refuse to acknowledge it just because it doesn't fit into their idea of what sport should be. And if rugby's worldwide values of inclusiveness and anyone being welcome in the sport are to be believed, then I hope we can encourage people to show off more of their personality in the way they present themselves as often on the field. I guess one argument you could throw at individualism in team sports is that you're all supposed to be part of a unit and all working towards the same goal. But I think that message gets muddled up as you can all be extremely different people and still working towards the same goal. Doing the exact same thing doesn't mean that you'd have to do it for the same reason or that you all have to be different variations of the same person. My dream is that at the next World Cup we can have two teams in the final filled with people who are as outspoken or quiet as they want to be with all the hair dye, mana, new mascara and weird and wonderful quirks that all make us our own person and are celebrated for that. Making rugby a sport that is known for some of the most compelling characters in the world because they are in this sport. Basketball has LeBron, NFL has Odell Beckham, and rugby will have Marcus Smith starting every match wearing the panda helmet from Tropic Thunder and riding a horse out the tunnel, or something along those lines. Maybe that's just something I want to see. But we all have different visions and quirks, and I guess that's what makes us all compelling and interesting individuals. Signed, NGJ. Thank you so much for watching, and please subscribe and turn the notification bell on to let you know when I upload. You can also follow me on social media at NGJRugby. 
Thank you again, and see you later.